Hi, this is Fern GZ Car website, www.ferngzcar.com. Welcome to my Winnipeg Poetry Reading Series, Part 4. I was delighted to be invited to Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada to do a reading to celebrate National Poetry Month. Since I'm originally from Winnipeg, I was fortunate to have friends and family in attendance in addition to other audience members, some of whom belong to a poetry appreciation group. I'm pleased to share excerpts from my presentation. It was based on poems from my book, Shards of Crystal, along with the special Winnipeg segment which I included. The final video in this series concludes with an interesting question and answer session. Here is part four of five of my reading. Enjoy! Okay, um, this next poem, uh, Alyssa mentioned the Pushcart Prize, and again, I don't want to sound like I'm standing here bragging or anything, but a Pushcart Prize nomination is pretty huge, it's sort of like one of the Academy Awards of Poetry. And uh, the way it works is editors and publishers from around the world can only nominate a few people for the entire year, and then there's, and, uh, their poetry is submitted to be eligible for this prize. And I didn't win, but it was always a dream of mine just to be even nominated. So when I found out about it, I was like, I was going to say what? <laughs> just me writing poetry down my basement. So very, very honored by that. Now, what I did was I wrote this poem on a music staff because I am a pianist and a musician and um, I wanted it to be meaningful to me. Uh, I also wanted it to mimic a piece of sheet music. So here's cool jazz. A curl of thin blue smoke snakes around a half empty glass of stale scotch. And as the ice cubes melt, the lazy swishing of a brush caresses percussion cymbals. The mellow plucking of thick strings on a double bass in counterpoint with the twang of an electric guitar and the pained expression on the guitarist's face. While sultry saxophone romances the house, confident fingers fly across the keyboard, pianist eyes closed, sway back and forth, entranced in the rhythm he creates. Shoulders heaving as he makes love to the piano. It's jazz and it's cool, baby. Uh huh. <laughs> okay, well, I know who's going to appreciate this poem, but I'm going to ask the audience a question. My mother, my sister, Matthew, and Shirley, maybe Roberta, are not allowed to answer. Mm. Mr. Walnick, who is, does anybody here know Mr. Walnick? Not allowed to answer. No? See, I'm a blasty presenter. Okay, Mr. Walnick was my grade seven science teacher. And uh, we had a class, and one of the classes, he was talking about the color red. I don't know if you remember. Color red, and he wanted the class, the students, to define the essence of what is red. So people would point something and say, well, that's red, that's red, that's red. He said, no, nah, it's not red. It's really hard to find a definition of a color like that. So all these years later, I won't fill up, say how many, but that grade seven class still resonates with me. And I, I wrote a poem called A Blind Man Describes Red. Hmm. Teach me red, said the blind man. <coughs> Describe red to me. Certainly. Red is the cherry, a stop sign, ketchup. No, no said the blind man. That is not the essence of red. I will describe red to you. Red is palpable. It is the flush of passion in a lover's breast, the convulsive fury of a charging bull, the bite of jalapeno on the tongue. Red is the fiery radiance of tropical summers, and red is the cosmic light force pumping through us all. <coughs> that is red. That is the red you do not see. But I do, said the blind man. <laughs> now, I, I don't think I should get myself into trouble for this, because it might be kind of sexist, I don't know. But this, this is a short little poem about someone who you might call a 
smooth operator. Okay, <laughs> it's called magic. And for his next trick, abracadabra, he pulls a rabbit out of his proverbial hat. Charming the ladies, not with prestidigitation, but with the magic of his smile. <laughs> so I was um, watching a movie, and in, it's actually an Italian movie, it's called Il Postino. Has anybody seen that movie? such a good movie. And it was about the life of Pablo Neruda, the famous poet uh, who is in exile. And this poem I would like to dedicate to the memory of my cousin Murray Gola because this was one of his favorite poems that I wrote. It's called Neruda on the Beach at Capri. A trembling sun drips beads of molten gold onto disc-shaped pebbles washed smooth by the surf that ebbs and flows with the sensual rhythms of lovemaking. Sea foam caressing the feet of a man adored by all women, romanced by his vel red velvet words. Madre Chile's exile, he strolls along the beach at Capri, surrounded by cliffs that dwarf him. He is a towering giant. <laughs> Morning Rapture is one of those poems that's a little spe more special to me. It reminds me of my girls. Morning Rapture. The stillness of morning stirs and spills quiet light, displacing last night's gloom. I stretch and purr, basking in the velvety softness of yesterday's sleep, diaphragm rhythmically heaving. The sun streams through windows, blanketing me with its radiance, an energizing rebirth, even for the padded paws, scrambling to greet me with sloppy kisses and welcome a new day. The morning is timid and peaceful, an intimate solitude not to be shared with those who sleep. And, okay, my final poem, um, my poem is called I Am. Uh, I, I read a book a few years ago called The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle, and it was one of those inspirational pieces, and it, it really did motivate me to write this poem. And I'm quite fortunate that um, it has had a fair bit of recognition. The former parliamentary poet laureate, Pierre de Ruizot, uh chose it as Poem of the Month for Canada. Mm -hmm. um, and then I entered it in a contest in Italy. I entered the poem in English and I translated it into Italian. And um, I, I was very fortunate to be one of four Canadians to win for both versions, an English and Italian version. And I've since translated the poem into Spanish. And then that was published uh, in Spanish, Spanish only, by the University of Wisconsin uh, Department of Spanish and Portuguese. And uh, I also, with a lot of help from my Mandarin teacher, I translated this poem into Mandarin, so coming up, <laughs> I am. I am the stars, the wind, the crystal, a blade of grass, a feather. I am entropy, a random assortment of oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and trace elements in a body that happens to exist at this point in time. Its individuality organically interconnected to the universal. <coughs> I'm a body that possesses limited cognition, an integral but trivial speck of infinity. I am a part of the universe. I am the universe. I exist. I am. <laughs> you are interested in learning a little bit more about my poetry, I do have some business cards up there. Uh, for those of you who are so inclined, my website is ferngzcar.com and uh, on Wikipedia under ferngzcar. Acknowledgements. All poems contained herein copyright ferngzcar. Cool Jazz, A Blind Man Describes Red, Magic, Neruda on the Beach at Capri, Morning Rapture and I Am are from my book, Shards of Crystal. Cool Jazz visual version was first published in the Worcester Review. 
A Blind Man Describes Red, was first published in Sejura. Neruda on the Beach at Capri was first published in Okanagan Arts. Morning Rapture was first published in Paws, Claws, Wings, and Things. I Am was first published on the Parliamentary Poet Laureate website as Poem of the Month for Canada. The Forks Photo by Robert Linsell, courtesy of Wikimedia Commons. Shards of Crystal Photo, copyright Fern G. Sadkar. Thanks very much for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to like and please be sure to subscribe. For more poetry, my book Shards of Crystal is available on Amazon. Thanks again and stay tuned for a new video every Wednesday.